you have learned what a geometric multiplicity is and you know that we can use this to determine whether a matrix is diagonalizable or not. But how does this work in an explicit example? Well, sometimes this can be quite a lot of work, but sometimes you are lucky and you can uh, deduce this straight away. In the following example, we will see both cases. Let's have a look. So here we have a matrix A. And the question is, determine the eigenvalues, their algebraic multiplicities and their geometric multiplicities. So first of all, we need to compute the eigenvalues. So we compute the determinant of A minus lambda times the identity matrix. We compute the characteristic polynomial. Uh, here we have our A minus lambda I3. And of course, we can uh, compute the determinant by expanding along the first row. That would be pretty stupid. We better use the first column instead because of the nice zeros over there. So expand along the uh, first column. So we get a minus lambda minus 1 times the determinant we get by raising the first row, first column. So this one over here, as you see here. Minus 0 times something plus 0 times something, so those cancel out. And then we have to compute this determinant over here. So we get a minus 1 minus lambda, or a minus between brackets 1 plus lambda, times 1 minus lambda times minus 2 minus lambda. And don't forget to put enough brackets here in order to avoid mistakes. Minus minus 2, so plus 2. And then we are over there. So, in those computations, don't forget the better brackets and careful the minus signs. Then we work out the brackets over here. Minus 2, minus lambda, plus 2 lambda, uh, plus lambda squared over here, plus 2. And let me see, hey, that's nice. We have a minus 2 and a plus 2, so those cancel out. A minus lambda plus 2 lambda equals a lambda, so we have lambda plus lambda squared. And we still keep the 1 plus lambda. Then we can factor out a factor of lambda here. So we get a lambda times 1 plus lambda. And we have, as you see, two factors here 1 plus lambda, 1 plus lambda. So we get a minus lambda and a 1 plus lambda squared. So there we are. There we have the characteristic polynomial. Well, the eigenvalues are the zeros of this polynomial. You can read them off straight away. The zeros are lambda equals 0, of course, once. So it has algebra multiplicity 1 and lambda equals minus 2 1 occurs twice so has algebraic multiplicity 2. Then we continue with the geometric multiplicities. We will do the lambda equals minus 1. So we get compute a uh, minus lambda 1 times e3. So lambda 1 equals minus 1 so that becomes a plus the identity matrix so we add the identity matrix to A. So we get a 0, a 2, and a minus 1 here. Like that. The others are the same. And <coughs> then we have to solve this matrix times V equals the 0 vector. So we have a problem of the form AX equals B. So we can form the augmented matrix A plus B. So there we are. And we have to do our row reduction. Well, let's subtract twice here and twice here. We keep the first row. We get a 0 minus 0 equals 0. Uh, we subtract 2 from the 2. Uh, gives me 0 over there. 1 from the minus 1 gives me minus 2 over there. 2 minus 2 gives me a 0. And 1 minus 1 gives me minus 2. Then we subtract minus 1 over here, which means that the lowest row is reduced com erased completely. And then we are in echelon form. Well, you could go on to reduce echelon form, but that's not really needed. Here we have 0 times c1 plus 0 times c2 plus minus 2 times c3 equals 0. So c3 equals 0. And the first row gives 0 times c1 plus 2 times c2 plus 0 equals 0. So c2 equals 0 and c1 is free. Make the parametric factor form. And we find e lambda minus 1 equals span of 1, 0, 0. So there we are. Then we are done with the lambda equals minus 1, which was 
quite some work. And now we're actually done. We can write down all numbers. So what do we have? A lambda equals minus 1. Add algebraic multiplicity 2. Has one independent eigenvector, 1, 0, 0. So its geometric multiplicity is 1. What about the other one? Well, actually, that one is much easier. It's the zero eigenvector with algebraic multiplicity 1. Why don't we have to do this procedure over here? Well, the uh, geometric multiplicity is at least 1. So it should be bigger or equal than 1. Because for every eigenvalue, you have at least one independent eigenvector. But the geometric multiplicity is also smaller or equal than the algebraic multiplicity, which is also 1. So the geometric multiplicity of this one is both bigger than 1 or equal and smaller and equal than 1. So it should be 1. So with this one, we are done straight away. So sometimes you have to work quite hard, like here for this eigenvalue, and sometimes you can argue straight away what the geometric multiplicity should be. Of course, you can compute it too, if you like. Now, is this matrix diagonalizable? Sum of algebraic multiplicities equals 3, so that's fine, that's enough. But the sum of geometric multiplicities is only 2, which is not enough. We have only two independent eigenvectors, which means that this matrix A is not diagonalizable.